Hi, it's John Heaton and today I'm going to continue my top 10 solo Beatles B-sides. So if you watched the earlier video, I covered numbers 7 to 10 here. Ringo, to George and a Paul. Uh, now in this video, I'm going to cover numbers 4 to 6. And so at number 6, I've got a track from 1989. Uh, well, it was the My Brave Face single, I think it was released in 89, yep, I mean, it was the same time as it, when the album came out, yep. Uh, and Fly Flying to My Home was a B-side, and on this 12-inch it's actually on the A-side, but on the 7-inch it's the B-side. And this cover, I don't know if you'll agree, but I think this would have made a great album cover. As it is, it's nice to have on a 12-inch single. But compare this to the cover of Flowers in the Dirt, what do you think? I think it's better. I mean, maybe it didn't fit the title, but uh, I think it's a, a wonderful picture. And um, anyway, glad to have it on this 12 inch. So Flying to My Home is an amazing track in my opinion. God knows why it was left off the album and released as a B-side. Uh, it's much too good for that. It's far superior to several tracks on Flowers in the Dirt, for example, much better than Don't Be Careless Love, Motor of Love, How Many People, to name but three, or Rough Ride. Um, but anyway, it's nice to have it on a B-side. It's not been, was not included in the Flowers in the Dirt archive release for some reason, on the vinyl or the CD. Uh, again, hard to fathom, because this song did turn up in, in a book of McCartney lyrics a few years ago, so Paul must have some affection for the song because um, I think he put that book together. But uh, it's just a wacky song with with very simple lyrics. The sky is like a painted flag above a sea of chrome. I've got a woman living in my life, living in my home. And the first verse is actually, the sun is fading in the west out where the cattle roam. I'm like a bird at the end of the day, flying to my home. And Paul's singing it in this wonderful uh, style, really well sung. Uh, I just love this song to bits, and uh, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to I'm going to rediscover it because I I haven't played it in a while, but uh, I've always remembered it. It was I had no hesitation putting it in my top ten solo B sides. So that was number six. Number five, we've got a track from Wings in 1972, the B side of. Hi, 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 single, Sea Moon. Unfortunately, I don't think this single ever came out in a picture sleeve, which is a bit unfortunate. Mary, Mary Had a Little Lamb came out in a, in a picture sleeve, not that there was anything to write home about. Give Ireland give, give Back to the Irish, I don't, I don't think did, um, but it had a, an interesting label. This, this label is rather, it's rather dull, but um, anyway. The quality of the songs is the most important. Actually, this B side is is far superior to the A side, in my opinion. I think "Hi Hi Hi" is not a particular highlight of Paul's solo career. I know he played it in concert quite a bit, um, and he still does actually. But I think this this B side is far superior. Um, just going to read you what Karen Tyler said in the famous Beatles Illustrated book record book. Um, actually, the B-side Sea Moon was infinitely superior and showed that McCartney had successfully mastered the reggae stumble. Probably his best individual song since Maybe I'm Amazed from the McCartney album. The, publicly, the public certainly liked it, putting it into third position on the charts, because what happened, Hi 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 was banned, so the radio stations started playing the B-side. and. Um, I mean, officially it was High, 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 which got to number three, I suppose, in the charts. But um, Sea Moon was the one which, which got played because High, High well, wasn't allowed to be played on the, on the radio due to drug references or sexual references. Anyway, um, he came back to the song in, when he started touring in the... Uh, I think he, he did a version in 89, 90, and then um, he's done it a few times since. So it's certainly uh, 
I think he holds this song in, in quite a bit of affection. And I like the, the concept. Sea Moon, for those of you who don't know, is a kind of slang expression meaning cool as, a, as opposed to square. So L7, L with the seven number makes a square roughly. Um, and th hence the lines, it, it would be L7 and I'll never get to heaven if I fill my head with glue. Um, good video, by the way. Of Wings performing this. Check that out. I think it's on YouTube. And um, this lyric is, you know, the young defiantly saying, I'm going to do what I like and I'm not going to listen to mum and dad too much. A bit reminiscent of um, the lyric for Backseat to My Car in that respect. Um, but anyway, a wonderful B side, and that was number five. And now, number four, we have another Wings B side. The B-side of Helen Wheels, um, Country Dreamer, which, as we saw on the recent Red Rose Speedway archive release, was actually slated to be on the album when Red Rose Speedway was going to be a double. Uh, and then it got slimmed down to be a single and, and a lot of those tracks got lost in the mix in, until th this archive release. But Country Dreamer, was put on the B-side of Helen Wheels. It's interesting that this single came out after Denny Sywell and Henry McCulloch had left the band. Um, and it's, it's just a joyous, it's just a joyous track. I mean, really, there's so many examples in the 70s where you flip over a Beatles solo single and you get a wonderful B-side. And this is, this is a, another great example. Um, I'm going to read you again what Carr and Tyler say about this song, because they're very complimentary. Uh, but the real charmer of this 45 is the cute country dreamer, which, although it takes four bars too long to get to the point, is a model of simplicity and a tasteful exercise in three-part harmony and clean, unobtrusive production. Yeah, it's just, um, it's just a wonderful sentiment to the song. He's hanging out in the country. It's very reminiscent of Heart of the Country in that, respe <coughs> in that respect. Um, and... I would say it was it's the last throw at the time it was the last throw in the those early what I would call the the innocent years of McCartney's solo career from the first solo album through Red Rose Speedway um those f four albums up until Red Rose Speedway I think can be seen as one as the early early solo McCartney uh, period if you like because after that, he obviously got big uh, commercially and uh, he lost a bit of the innocence. But those first four albums, McCartney, Ram, Wildlife, Red Rose Speedway, I think are very much uh, a body of work in itself and I, what I would call the early years, the innocence years, if you like. And uh, this was the last example of that, although it came out on the B-side of Helen Wheels. And again, another example of the B-side being in my opinion, far superior to the A-side. Helen Wheels is, is an okay rocker, but it's nothing special, in my opinion. Right. So, that was number four. So, just give you the numbers four through ten we have so far. And then the next video will be the top three. So, thank you for watching. See you next time.